from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English. Winner of the Southern Oregon Television Award, Program of the Year, and the Best Education Show in 2017. I'm the producer and host, John Letts. Ramping Up Your English is an instructional support program, uh, program for intermediate level English learners. Now, if you've already passed those beginning stages of learning English, and you want to reach higher levels of English proficiency, this program is designed to meet your needs and get you closer to your goal. Ramping Up Your English is for English learners from all language backgrounds and for people of all ages. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our current thematic unit is Native Americans. This is segment one of episode 85. In our last episode, we heard from Dr. Bruce Huckle about the people of the Folsom culture. In this unit, we'll listen to many stories we ask who is telling the story and why are they telling it? Professor Huckle, an archeologist in New Mexico, who has studied the physical clues left behind from people who lived there thousands of years ago. He's telling the story of linking that physical evidence with learning about the people who used a different style of spear point than the older Clovis culture. Now, forming hypotheses and theories from physical evidence is a science-based approach to understanding the world in which we live. Thus, I can say that the professor is seeking truth and sharing what he's learned. He also confessed that his knowledge is limited, that the evidence can't really prove who the ancestors of the Folsom people were or the descendants. You know, it's an intriguing story that he tells. Now let's listen to another story. This one is not science-based, although a great many years of observation were invested by the author. In an earlier episode, we shared the first chapter of Indian Tales by Jaime de Anjulo. De Anjulo spent 40 years living among the Pitt River Indians in Northern California. He wrote Indian tales for his young children. Furthermore, he made sure his stories reflected the truth about the values and customs of the Pitt River tribe. So in his own way, his story is about seeking and sharing truth. Today we'll share the second chapter when we left off left time, uh, the last time. This family of bear, antelope, fox, and baby quail had just gone to sleep after a day of traveling toward the coast. Let's listen to what happens in this short chapter. The next morning, Bear woke up early, long before the sun was up. It was the very beginning of the break of dawn when Bear sat up and started to sing. He was singing softly to himself, sort of humming. Then he got up and stretched himself and went to the spring to wash his face. He started a campfire while it was yet all dark. Then he started to cook breakfast. He was heating stones, small round stones. Mother, what was he singing? Who is that man, he said, was coming over the mountains from the east, singing with the daylight? Oh, he was singing about his shadow. That song is the, what the shadow sings, your shadow also. You must make him sing that way in the morning. Everyone's shadow comes home in the dawn, singing like that. What do you mean, comes home? Sure, he comes home to you, your shadow does. You are his home. But where has he been? Oh, he's been going around during the night, visiting going places, and in the morning he comes home to you. Does he always come? No. Sometimes he gets lost. That's why your father was singing. We are in a strange place. 
his shadow might be wandering around looking for him. But if the shadow hears him singing, he says to himself, Oh, that's me over there. That's where I belong. And if he gets lost, what happens then? Well, then you get sick and you die. You can't keep living without your shadow. Fox Boy thought a moment, then he said, But Father is not going to die, because he's singing and his shadow must have hurt him. I'd better sing too, so my shadow will hear me. Do you think you can remember the song? Listen, we'll sing it together. The words are, I'm coming, I'm coming over the mountains, I come home. I'm coming, I'm coming, with the daylight I come home. I'm coming, I'm coming, from the east, I come home. Now look, we'd better get up and help Bear cook breakfast. So they got up and washed their faces at the spring. Then Antelope took some acorn flour and made a mush. Then she picked up some hot stones from the fire with a couple of sticks and dropped them into the mush, which was in a small basket. The hot stones made a hissing sound. Whish, whish, whish. Pretty soon, the mush was bubbling and boiling. Little Fox Boy couldn't wait. He put his two fingers in the mush. Ouch! he yelled, jumping up and down, shaking his fingers. Well, why don't you wait and let it cool a little? Nobody is going to take it away from you. Take your time, take your time. It never was that people couldn't wait a minute. Watch me, watch how I do it. Now Antelope deftly scooped some mush with her fingers, two of her fingers, and licked them off. Quickly, just like that. That's the way to do it, she said. Oh, I can do that myself, said Fox. He was so quick that he smeared his nose with the mush, and they all laughed. Breakfast over, they rolled up their things, shouldered their packs, and started traveling again. Tross, 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 up the trail. Tross, 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 down the trail. Tross, 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 along the trail. They traveled all day, and that night they made their camp by a little stream. And Fox Little Boy crawled in between bear and antelope under the rabbit skin blanket and was soon fast asleep. <laughs>